Now, when it was pulled off the air, the uproar that occurred between the fans writing letters and trying to get the show back, was that just a spontaneous outpouring, or who, who, was, who was the creative force behind all of that to get everybody together to protest the show being taken off the air? Well, there were two protests. There was a protest between the first and second season that was ostensibly led by uh, a writer named Harlan Ellison uh, and a number of other writers. But the truth of the matter was, as I found in the archives, Gene was behind that. Gene was the, uh, the uh, gray eminence hiding in the background pulling the strings. Uh, between the second and third season, uh, there was a, a fairly good chance that the program would be canceled. And at that point, there, were, um, there was a, uh, a protest by students from Caltech that essentially Gene orchestrated behind the scenes. There was a w young woman named Wanda Kendall who uh, was secretly flown to New York by Gene, and uh, she snuck into the executive parking lot and stuck Mr. Spock for President bumper stickers on all of the executive's vehicles. Uh, and then there was a fan-based uh, movement that Gene helped out a little bit financially and uh, organizationally a little bit, but it was principally done by B. Joe and John Trimble, who were uh, very large fans of the program. And they, as best we've been able to determine, because NBC has never admitted how many, um, how many letters have come in, but as best we can determine, uh, it was around uh, a little over a million letters were received to save Star Trek between the second and third seasons. And while it wasn't successful in getting Star Trek back... Uh, well, no, 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 it, it, it was. was. Wait a minute. It, it was. was, it was. This was between the second and third season. There was a, another letter-writing campaign, but it lacked the vigor of the, uh, the, fir the second campaign, and uh, it didn't come back. When NBC canceled it, it was gone. So, okay, again... And it stayed gone. How, how many seasons did Star Trek run collect? Three. three. Three seasons, and... It sounds now like after at the end of each season there was always a danger of imminent cancellation. Here. Oh yes, well, uh, the great the sad thing was that Star Trek was never terribly successful in the general uh, ratings. I think it never got any higher than 52. It was certainly never in uh, the top 25 uh, for the three years that it was on the air. Um, but unfortunately, in those days, they were counting everyone that watched the program, retired firemen's widows, as Gene used to like to characterize them, uh, and everyone else. Uh, about a year or so after it had been canceled, and there was no hope of bringing the show back at that point, um, Gene was told by one of the vice presidents that they had learned through refined demographic studies that they had kicked off the air their most successful program, that for the, the males 18 to 49, who were the principal people who bought things, uh, they were the biggest watchers of Star Trek. And it, it hit a very strong target market. And NBC, not knowing any better, helped kill it and get it off the air. But between that time and the time that the first Star Trek movie came out, we, we have this image of Gene Roddenberry trying, and I don't know if fail would be the right word, but trying a variety of different television productions until he eventually starts to make a tour of college circuits. Well, what had happened there was um, the show went into uh, a kind of a, a ratings, uh, or not ratings, but a syndication heaven. It, it was uh, this giant money-making machine for Paramount, which owned Desi Lu at that point. And anything that would be done to produce more shows always was looked upon with great suspicion by Paramount because they called, they called the series their 79 crown jewels. As I said, it was this giant money-making machine uh, that they didn't have to pay uh, production costs, they didn't have to pay those pesky ac actors and writers. Uh, the program just went out and it made money and made money and made money. And they didn't have ongoing costs. So Paramount was very reluctant to do anything new. Uh, NBC started talking about bringing the show back in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. and, and Paramount said, fine, uh, you'll have to order uh, four episodes and they're uh, three quarters of a million dollars, et cetera, et cetera. It was a huge capital risk that uh, NBC wasn't willing to take. So, 
that it languished. So it, it languished, and I'm wondering, you mentioned how it was a money-making machine because they didn't have to pay the actors or the production costs because that had already been taken care of. I'm wondering what the financial ramifications of this were for the actors as well as for the producer of Star Trek. Did they get any residuals from these? Well, they got the residuals uh, depending upon their contract. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them were contracted for a union scale, mm -hmm. which gave them union scale uh, up to five runs. And uh, thank you very much. I remember Nichelle Nichols casually mentioning to me that uh, everyone was paid off within two years. Uh, Gene received his residuals for two years. Now, he was a participant in the net profit distributions of Star Trek, as was NBC, interestingly enough, uh, and Paramount, and so was Bill Shatner, surprisingly enough. Bill Shatner uh, was to receive, by contract, 20% of the net. Uh, that got cut in half when he got divorced uh, in 1968 or 1969. That was a community property uh, that was divided in half. But the show did not make, didn't go into profit or did not go where few shows have gone before until uh, 1984. Mm -hmm. Gene used to say that the best science fiction in television was always written by the accountants at Paramount. And 1984, that was when Star Trek The Next Generation premiered? No, that was 1987. Uh -huh. uh, 1984, there had been uh, three films, and uh, Gene got together with, uh, with uh, Shatner mm -hmm. and uh, gave uh, Paramount four magic words that caused them to... Uh, to uh, cough up some money, and those were Burt Fields, who was a very, very powerful show business attorney in Los Angeles, and independent audit. And whoa, my goodness, Mr. Roddenberry, we're so glad you called because uh, we've just gone into net. And Gene got a check for $851,000.